ជាសួរសិទ្ធិផ្សាយបន្តផ្ទាល់ជារៀងរាល់ថ្ងៃចាន់ពីម៉ោងសូមជូនមេត្តាការព័ត៌មានសម្រាប់ថ្ងៃចាន់ទី <cười> Nung bát sâm pier, chim mui luk sai mía, chia pike chun senator, ku pike chun prince of pier, some rapper one Massachusetts, prochem no the bon Essex County bat, how nung tìm chop, ku niti mate, prochipo rot bat. Badlum dap tolony, so mò luk sai premit, tam dan no niti. ប្រវត្តិសាស្ត្រដោយតតើបាទសូមអរគុណបាទសូមភ័យទោសដល់បញ្ហាបច្ច័យកទេសបាទលោកខាងអ្នកគណ្ត្រូលគាត់កំពុ
saying, uh, we would like to sign the treaty because Vietnamese knew that that treaty would buy them an insurance against likely or possible Chinese reaction to what they're going to do in Cambodia. So in so November 78, the Vietnamese signed a treaty with the Soviet Union. In December 1978, uh, the Khmer Rouge launched a, uh, a fairly small attack into, into uh, Vietnam, northwest of Ho Chi Minh City in Tainan province, and it was at this point that the Vietnamese hit. Uh, they decided that enough was enough, they were going to go for broke, they had neither the political uh, nor the, the, uh, the underlying current of a revolution in Kampuchea, and they decided to go for broke. They did this with a tactic known as the Blooming Lotus, which, which merely is a textbook drive uh, straight down highways. They picked three main highways into Kampuchea, uh, where all highways lead to Phnom Penh, uh, and they simply drove down the highways, uh, splitting up the Pol Pot forces as they went. The idea was simply to reach Phnom Penh and into western Kampuchea as quickly as possible, establish as much control of the roads and, and the strategic areas as possible, as quickly as possible. And this is what they did with the so-called Blooming Lotus. Uh, the Pol Pot forces were put into, into massive disarray. Uh, so the, the original tactic uh, did work. It did establish the, uh, the uh, command, and it did get the Vietnamese uh, into Phnom Penh where they could quickly claim victory. It took some two weeks to reach Phnom Penh. When the capital fell on the 7th of January 1979, the Vietnamese had won control of Kampuchea. After three and a half years of terror, the Pol Pot regime had collapsed. To cap their stunning victory, the Vietnamese had even planned to kidnap Sihanouk from house arrest. But just a day before Phnom Penh was captured, the prince was released by the Khmer Rouge and flown out to China. Pol Pot himself and the leading Khmer Rouge then fled to the jungle only hours in advance of the Vietnamese juggernaut. It all appears very confused when communists start fighting communists, but I think it's uh, fairly simple here, really. The border fighting merely provided an excuse for something that was bound to occur sooner or later. Uh, if there had not been border fighting, it might have had to have been achieved through a coup d'etat in Phnom Penh or an infiltration of Pol Pot's com communist party. But uh, Vietnamese control of Indochina uh, is, a, is a basic tenet. This used to be a prosperous business quarter. It's now an empty shell. The people of the city went away with only their bare hands. Had liberation been late in coming, had it been postponed by only five or seven months, how many would be left of the population of Kampuchea? North of Phnom Penh, about 10 kilometers from the Po Chantong airfield, was a weapons yard of about four hectares in area. It contained thousands of tons of artillery ammunition. Weapons were sent in by Peking in such quantities that the Pol Pot Yangtze regime ran short of storehouses. Peking was indeed full of solicitude for their protégé, the Pol Pot Yangtze clique. Visit to a secondary school. Over the past three years, this school was turned into a jail for political prisoners. Let us visit a cell block. This is a special block. We say it is special because in each former classroom only one prisoner was kept. His hands and feet were chained to an iron bag. When we came to this prison on the 14th of January, 1979, there were 11 dead bodies in the 11 former classrooms and one body lying in the yard. In this compound, we found a large number of prisoners' files and photographs. After killing a prisoner, the torturers would cut his throat and rip up his belly.
then put a number on his body and once again take a photograph of him, dead. What did they do it for? Pol Pot uh, is mad, you know, like Hitler, like Hitler. And uh, Pol Pot, they had to suppress all opposition, to wipe out all opposition, including many communists uh, in his own party, in order to remain the master of Cambodia. Among the photographs of the dead prisoners are portraits and statues of Pol Pot. No command is needed. Westerners uh, ask me, yes, even if we believe that Pol Pot is mad, how can he have so, so many uh, Khmer Rouge to support him, to serve him? And when, when Hitler uh, uh, was uh, in power in uh, Germany, uh, could you say that uh, the German people was bad or uh, uh, the German elite uh, was bad? But it happened that everybody, you know, uh, law, uh, uh, at least followed uh, him. And he had at his disposal many mad men, uh, very bad, like uh, Himmler, uh, etc. Uh, so uh, Pol Pot has a Himmler, his Himmler, etc. Uh, the same phenomenon. We found these children in the office building. All were paralyzed with hunger and fear. Who are their parents? And where are they now? Just imagine the horrible days these children spent in this blood stained compound. That men like Pol Pot and Hitler can have supporters. That is a phenomenon, uh, but in conformity with uh, the misery of our mankind, you know, uh, our earth. <laughs> lack God's luck. <laughs> our earth lacks God's luck. The Khmer Rouge, they are criminal. Certainly, since uh, they have killed so many innocent people in Kampuchea, but uh, it is not uh, enough as a reason to give the Vietnamese the permission to, to, to colonize and Vietnamize my country. A month and ten days after the Vietnamese took Phnom Penh, the Chinese invaded northern Vietnam. Uh, there were obviously two reasons why they did this. One was to try to pull regular units of the Vietnamese army up onto the border and then out of Kampuchea, of course, to give Pol Pot, who was fighting for his life, a chance to, to regroup and perhaps counterattack the Vietnamese. The second reason uh, was to boost the morale of countries in this area, particularly Thailand, who felt somewhat threatened by the sudden fall of Kampuchea to the invading Vietnamese army uh, a month earlier. The Chinese had vowed to teach their southern neighbor a lesson. In a series of furious battles, they did punish the Vietnamese, but their own casualties were extremely high. The Vietnamese rode out the storm without needing help from their Soviet allies. They emerged with their military pride intact, and above all, their control of Kampuchea was not changed in the least.